Hi, this is Fred. In this video, I will demonstrate a time-lapse server solution. This is a, an extension or a complement to the time-lapse me ACAP that I published many years ago, which is one of the most popular ACAP downloads where the typical use case is construction site progress monitoring and using time-lapse for that. So the time-lapse server is more suitable if you have multiple cameras and you want to have a centralized place to manage and all your time-lapse recordings if you have multiple cameras. So what you're seeing here is the dashboard and I currently have one time-lapse um, configuration of a demo camera. Um, and this is configured to trigger on every minute and no conditions, frame rate 10, 10 frames per second, playback, resolution, the IP address, user, and password to the camera. So once I select this, I can click through the image captures, and then I can generate an MP4. So now it's generating, and how long time the generation depends on how many frames, the resolution, and the kind of hardware that you're running on. So we can now just uh, see here now that the latest MP4 generation was made this date at this time. And we can just click on this. And here is our time lapse. So it's 10 frames per second playback and it's one capture every minute. So you can from here go into save video as and you can download that into to your computer. So this works great if uh, the, the time-lapse server has access to the cameras, meaning it will be pulling images from the camera. So what if the server cannot access the, the cameras, but the cameras can access the server? Typically that the server would be running on some kind of a closed uh, server and the cameras are protected by behind a firewall, but they can do an outgoing request. So we can uh, create a new time lapse and we can call this one uh, demo motion. The trigger here in this case will be HTTP and no specific conditions and the playback and we can let's we can go up to 35 frames per second here and we can save. As you see here that it's not possible to add any address or credentials to the camera once selecting HTTP you click save and then you see an http endpoint url here so what you need to do then is going into the camera and creating a new recipient and we can call this one uh, a time lapse server it's going to be an http and the URL to the server, in this case, I have 10, 13, 8, 20, and it's running on port 81, 0, 0, 0. So we have a slash there, and we can go back here and just mark this and copy this. Control C, going back here, and there. So there's no, uh, there's no credential set on the time-lapse server, so we can just save that. So now we have a recipient. We can now add a rule, and uh, let's call this uh, motion, we call it motion lapse. So it's not gonna be, the images are not gonna be triggered on a timer, it's gonna be triggered by motion. And no condition, oh, sorry. We can remove that one, remove condition, yeah, delete. Uh, and the, the trigger we're going to be using is I have object analytics on based on motion. Having a, the action is going to be send images through HTTP. The recipient is going to be the time-lapse server. And then the only important thing here is at the bottom, you see maximum images. We just want one image when there is motion. We can click save there. 
So if we go to the server here and click refresh, I see I don't see any images. I can go and just testing, making a test alarm here. It's making a, a simulating motion and going back to the time lapse server and click refresh. And there we have now one, one image. So this camera will now, every time there's motion, it's going to be uploading an image to, to this. And then we can generate an MP4. And we can look at the uh, conditions that I maybe I want a time lapse to trigger every day at noon, at sun noon, when the sun is at the highest position. This would be the common case for like a construction site progress. The reason you want that to, to be at the sun, at exactly sun position is because the shadows are gonna be directed to the same um, direction. So if you look at here at the bottom, you see geolocation and sun events. So we can just double click here. And here we see a map it's currently placed in Lund, but assuming that it's, uh, I can just scroll out and let's do this one in Boston. Um, right there. And you see it recalculates the, uh, the dawn, the sunrise, the sun noon and sunset and dusk. So now when we set that, we can, uh, we can close this. So let's call this uh, sun noon. The trigger is going to be sun noon. And we can, uh, since I'm not going to, so I'll, I'll use the same, uh, the camera as the, uh, even though it's a different one six seven and it, let's do root and so when you use the, the address and adding a camera it will try to connect and it says sun noon saved uh, you get a green up here in the corner and saying showing you that it has access to the camera but what about this one? We can go back to the demo. And so this is gonna be taking every minute, but it's, let's say I don't want to take a, any images during night. So now I can go in here and add a condition and saying, I only want images captured every minute, but only between sunrise and sunset. I can also select dawn to dusk it will the images will be darker but in this case i will use sunrise and sunset and save so now i will show you how to install this uh, time lapse server so if, we'll start here at my uh, uh, git pages where i post the articles and here you'll find a time lapse server it will basically tell you the things that i just showed so we can click here in installation instructions, which will take me to a GitHub. And here there are installation instructions. So the prerequisite here is it's going to be a, you need to have a Linux server that, you know, runs 24 seven with Docker and Git installed. So let's start here that I copy this and going into my command line on my Linux server. And we can just paste that. And now we can go into the directory it created. And we can just uh, view what's, uh, what's inside here. So it's a Docker compose file. And there is a, the readme file and license, which is an MIT license. So we may want to adjust the, the port and the time zone. So we can go to go Nano, which is using the Linux uh, editor and the so, Docker Compose YAML. 
So what you're going to see here that the image that is going to be pulled down, it's Fragilene Time Lapse Server. I gave it a container name, a user. So if I already have something on my server that uses port 8100, we can modify this. It will always restart. And here you have the time zone. So if you're going to be using the conditions on sunset and sunlights and sun, noon and everything, uh, you need to change this to the time zone you're in. You can Google time zone names in order to find the time zone name for, for your where you live or where the camera is in there. And we can lay, leave the, the same. So no changes here, but we can still control S will save it and control X will jump out. So now we will only need to start here going into Docker, just run Docker compose up and we will detach immediately. So the oh, Docker with a one O. So now it's pulling down the image from Docker Hub and it will only do this once. And you can also, if I do make updates, you can do a, a Docker Compose pull to get the latest image upload there. Let's, we can adjust this so you can see at the bottom, come on. Oh, was it that big? If I do this, yeah. So it's pulling down the images or the image. And now it starts the image. So we can now see it has started. So if we go back and there you go. So now everything, now you can start adding cameras and time lapse and everything. If you do want to either inspect, because this is based on Node-RED, or alter the, uh, the dashboard or any other logic, if you go to the same address and go to the directory admin, now here you can see the flows. You may just inspect it, or you, if you if you want to develop your own Node-RED stuff, you may go in here and see how I did a couple of things. So it's, here's the initialization and getting the uh, time lapse recording list uh, into a dashboard table, and this is the image viewer that you can click next and previous here's where it generates mp4 and so this may be a, a, a good idea so if you have multiple um, multiple time lapse and it may take some time after a while when you have multiple images if you go let's take this one i just go oh sorry here and there that if you have multiple images and you want to generate the the mp4s automatically at the bottom here you see auto generate mp4 video every day and if you enable that that at 1 a.m one o'clock in the morning it will go through all your recordings or the image captured and generate a new mp4 and making that link available with an updated of the mp4 so another thing is where are the images stored and the recording is stored. So if you go into your the command line and the shell, and if we now look in the directory, we see a, a new directory called time lapse. So if we go into to that and look what's inside, so you see one another directory called images. Uh, and if there were MP4 recordings, you would have a directory called recordings. So if we look into images, we see a, a another directory, and which is this is a unique ID for that um, time lapse that we generated. And we can go in and just uh, ls uh, 
into that. Oh, images, sorry. And here you see the JPEG images and they are stored with the epoch timestamp with the millisecond resolution. And the same thing, once you generate a recording, you would have a directory called recordings and there you would find your MP3, MP4 files. So it's fairly easy to get going and I hope that uh, this application can be valuable for you or you can stick with the time-lapse me ACAP. So see you later. Bye.